Hey guys and welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I have a neat little project uh, which I'm gonna do. Um, as I may have shown some time back on this channel, I'm into historic karting. Um, I raced karts back in the 90s and now a couple of friends and I have bought some uh, old go-karts and we're racing them. And uh, these little engines rev up to about 18 or 20 thousand rpms so they are pretty prone to uh, to failures and this engine right here is a 1995-96 something uh, Yako engine and I bought this last season uh, from a guy who had a, a piston failure or piston ring failure. So I bought this knowing that I'm gonna have to give it a full rebuild and what I'm gonna do today is that I'm going to take the cylinder off and bore it out using my lathe. And I've done this on a number of engines before and it's I've developed something of a, a method that's uh, really working out. So uh, so I'm going to take the cylinder off and I'm going to give you uh, some shots of what happened to this engine and, uh, and then we'll uh, go over to the lathe and we're going to fix it up. So we've taken the head off and we're looking down in the cylinder here. We have the piston right here. And as you can see, if I can just get this focused is that we have some some parts here of the piston and the piston ring that are uh, totally gone actually um, and what I believe happened is that this piston ring has probably had too um, too low of a clearance it, it didn't have enough clearance in the gap on the piston ring so what happened is that it snagged the uh, the port here and broke off as it uh, expanded. So um, it's created some really bad uh, scratches in the cylinder, and that's the the thing we're gonna try and fix here. We are going to put this up on the in the lathe, and we are going to bore it out give it a nice new uh, perfect bore and try and get rid of some of these um, these marks here or scratches and they're pretty deep I'm not going to be able to get rid of all of it and I don't need to uh, either because it doesn't steal that much uh, power to have some small scratches there And what I'm doing is that I'm using the backing plate for my four jaw chuck and that's working really well for uh, for holding uh, these kind of cylinders. backing plate on and I'll show you in just a minute the holes that I've drilled for uh, fastening the cylinders Thank you. 
So as you can see, I've drilled and tapped a couple of holes here, which I can use to have different bolt patterns. So it, uh, it fits most of these uh, cylinders. So basically the cylinder is going to go like that. And then I just come in with a boring bar and uh, bore it out. Before doing that, of course, I have to center it very carefully um, and indicate it to, to get it as close to, uh, to center as possible. So that's about as good as we're going to get it. It's about one hundredths uh, of a millimeter. Um, and that can also be because the, the bore isn't perfectly round. Um, if the motor has been used quite a lot, uh, the bore gets bigger on the, on the front and the back. Um, but that's uh, that's pretty close to to perfect, so I'm gonna leave it at that. stick out of about 125 millimeters about there cylinder diameter right now is 50.07 millimeters and as for the pistons what I have on hand the biggest one I have is 
50.17 and we need about 10 uh, hundreds of clearance or one tenth of uh, clearance so I want optional if I'm to use this 50.17 piston I'm gonna need the cylinder to be 50.27 when I'm done now the honing because after I've uh, bored it I'm gonna need to hone the cylinder and that takes about two tenths so ideally then uh, when boring I want it to be 50.25 millimeters that's the the uh, dimension I'm shooting for so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my uh, micrometer to 50.25 sorry and I'm going to set the bore gauge to that dimension so I know that when the bore gauge is uh, zeroed out I have the right dimension I'm going to run it fairly slow 140 reps per minute So I've touched off there and I've set the gauge to zero and uh, I'm going to set some feed and I'm going to go in the full depth. It's going to take some time because I'm running pretty slow and uh, then I can just watch my gauge and work outwards until I hit that 50.25. As you can see here those uh, markings are uh, visible but uh, they're uh, hardly you can hardly feel them with your fingers so uh, I think it's pretty good and we've cleared all the bore all the way in there are no parts which haven't been bored so I think we're pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna take a measurement and we'll see we'll see where we're at. So measuring we have about eight and a half to nine hundreds to go. So uh, we're going to dial it out and uh, I think I'm going to take all of that in one shot and try to get, get it as close as possible. One, two, three, four and a half.
about one and a half to two thousand two hundred uh, too small so the question is do we do another run and uh, get rid of those or I think we do I think I'm gonna take one more cut So I'm gonna have to share my mistake here. Uh, luckily it's not a catastrophic one. Um, but this goes to show just how easy it is to make a measuring mistake. So the last measure I took right there was what I thought was two, two hundreds under the uh, dimension we were shooting for. But uh, it was actually two hundreds over what we were shooting for. Um, maybe I'm gonna have to go look, go back and look at the video. But as I recall it, we were two hundreds over. Uh, no, sorry, two hundreds under, and. Um, I decided to take another 200 and now I'm 500 over the measurement we were uh, shooting for. So it's not a problem. I am going to have to just order a piston in the right size. Um, it's not a big problem. But uh, it's always better when, when things go the way you planned. But uh, hey, sometimes you make mistakes and uh, the important thing is that you learn from it. So um, I'm going to take a measurement, find out exactly what uh, cylinder, uh, what the bore is right now. And then we're going to hone it. And I'm going to show you the process of honing it because normally I use my honing tool on a cordless drill. Um, and uh, on the on the workbench but uh, when I have the cylinder set in the lathe it is very easy to just hone it while it's there and use the lathe for that process as well so I'm going to show you that as well and we'll just see what the final dimension is and I'll uh, just get a, a piston of the right size So this is the uh, honing tool I'm using and we we'll just put it in the chuck and we just get rid of some things. I get some oil in there.
And as you can see, that's looking very good. You have that cross pattern. And uh, yeah, I think that board is going to turn out just great. I've checked the bore with the bore gauge and it seems almost perfectly true. So we're gonna take the cylinder off and we're gonna clean it up and we are going to gauge it again and see what the final dimension is. So that's zero. That is minus two thousands. So that's pretty much zero. Minus two thousands. That's minus five thousand. So about a half a half a hundredth of a millimeter in difference. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, those two spots right there are the where the uh, scratches were those and uh, there are no scratches left on the wall so that's very good we've gotten rid of uh, pretty much all the evidence of a uh, failure earlier So all that's left now to do is to chamfer these edges just a little bit. The uh, just uh, take off the the burr on the ports here, and that goes for pretty much all the ports in there. And the reason for that is that you do not want the uh, piston ring to get caught up on one of these edges. So you need to kind of deburr them. And uh, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to order a new piston and I'm also going to go over the uh, bottom of this uh, engine because when you have parts like this flying around inside the engine you need to check that everything is okay there and I might, might uh, swap the bearings and uh, give it a full full rebuild. But that th that's it for this video hope you've uh, enjoyed this process and hopefully you've learned something I've learned uh, a thing that I pretty much knew earlier <laughs> that you need to be really careful not to make any measuring mistakes but um, yeah all in all I'm happy with the job and I think it's gonna turn out great thanks for watching bye